Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk Kashris, presented by the Kashris Awareness Project in conjunction with Torah Anytime. Today, I am honored to be joined by Rabbi Yaakov Teichman, Rabbinical Coordinator with OK Kosher. Thank you, Rabbi Teichman, for joining us once again. Thank you for having me. With the approach of Pesach, I'd like to discuss a, a very important and, and prevalent topic, something that uh, I think it's important to shed light on, and that is the vigilance and awareness that consumers should have when they go to the grocery, really around the year, but specifically before Pesach, as far as checking products that they take off the shelf to make sure, first of all, that it has a reliable hechsher, and now with the approach of Pesach, to make sure that it is certified kosher for Pesach. We've heard horror stories over the years of people who've bought products, even from a supposedly kosher for Pesach section, and then either on Pesach or before Pesach, once they've prepared items, they find out that the item was not kosher for Pesach. I'm sure that you have many stories to Unfortunately, to unfortunately, <laughs> depends how you want to look at it. Right. So tell us about your experience in this regard. Yeah. So as you said, it's consumer awareness. People have to be vigilant, cognizant to make sure that everything that comes into your house is up to your standard. That's the whole year round. Pesach is especially more difficult because Pesach, a lot of products look the same, but they just have a P which denotes Pesach. Just to, as an aside, in, in Kasha symbols, P means Pesach, and Parv is spelled out Parv. So if you see anything with any symbol and it says P, it means Kasha Le Pesach, or they will write in, in uh, Loshan Kodesh, Kasha Le Pesach, or sometimes they'll write Kosher for Passover, but a person has to check to make sure that it is. Recently, Baruch Hashem, there's been a big push to try to change the packaging when it comes to Pesach. So let's say a lot of the Hamish snack bags, the ones that are kosher for Pesach, they may like be on, on the side, it'll be like purple kosher for Passover. Like it should jump out at you that mm -hmm. this bag is different than everything else, and that's how you know that this is something that you want to take. The bottom line is that what comes into your house, whoever is bringing it into the house, they're the ones who are responsible to make sure that it is up to your standard, whether it's year-round or whether it's kosher Pesach. Especially when it comes to, uh, to Pesach, there are a lot of stores that have kosher Pesach sections. And they do their best to try to make sure that everything here is kosher Pesach. The people stocking the shelves typically do a good job. First of all, everyone is human, they could make a mistake. Second of all, the distributor sometimes sends a, a pallet of, pallet means a bunch of boxes on a pallet and says they're all kosher Pesach and buried in the middle somehow is one that's not kosher Pesach and mm. the fellow who is stocking the shelves just puts everything and he doesn't realize mm. that some things are not kosher Pesach. Much more often what happens is a consumer walks by the aisle, he picks up what he wants, a noodle soup and from the Chomet section and then he gets a Pesach and says, no, I want the one kosher Pesach. And he sees the one kosher Pesach and he just takes it out of his wagon and puts it straight on the shelf and takes the one that he wants. This mm -hmm. happens all the time. This happens in kosher stores. This happens in other stores like, like, supermarkets. like supermarkets, like ShopRite, Stop and Shop. They may have kosher Pesach sections, but there's no guarantee that everything there is 100% kosher Pesach. Mm -hmm. Yes, like I said, we're working on labeling that it should be very clear separate, sometimes they put an extra sticker on, but the bottom line is that when it comes into your house, you have to make sure that it is kosher Pesach. I just want to share with you two stories, that one that I was personally involved with and one that I have sure. first-hand information. One of them, about five, six years ago, a caterer I was working with, he wanted to do Pesach production. So mashkiach comes, they have to kosher everything, they, you have to wait 24 hours and no production. And before you kosher, you have to clean up the whole place and catering facilities, not like cleaning up your house kitchen, it's a big deal. And everything they use is kosher le Pesach. And it costs a lot of money, it's time, money, etc. They, let's say they kosher on a Monday, I don't remember what day of the week, let's say they kosher on a Monday, Tuesday, and, and after mashkiach finished koshering, they were cooking the whole Monday night, Tuesday morning. I got there Tuesday afternoon, Probably it was around 1, 2 o'clock afternoon. And one of the things I do typically is do inventory check to make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Because anything could slip by. And I found a box of macaroni. Wow. And it said on it, wheat. And my heart was in my toes. Like as soon as I saw that. So I called over the owner, a very, very early fellow. He said, no, it came from a, from a distributor, Kosher Pesach. Wow. 
So I called the distributor. I said, is it kosher le Pesach? You know, there's a lot of people working in the distribution company, but I got a, a from manager, and he said, is there any tzad, this is kosher le Pesach? Told me, tell me anything you see on the bag, and I was able to read in the code on the bag, he said, this is guaranteed chametz. Mm-hmm. And it took, we had to wait another 24 hours, all the food that they cooked had to go in the garbage. Wow. Uh, not garbage. They did were they used to chametz. Based on your conversation with the distributor, did they figure out what had happened, how that box got the, in? These things happen all the time. A distributor mm-hmm. has on their truck, and it, it's, it's an accident. Things happen. They, have, they could sell you choviso and not choviso, and the, 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 the driver drops it off. I was recently by a restaurant, and I found a place that's only choviso, and I found a box of pancakes that were chol stam. Mm-hmm. I said, what is it? first of how it got in, so... It, it was, so Nobody noticed it because it wasn't on the invoice. It mm. ended up extra, extra. There were supposed to be th- two boxes, and they got three. Mm. And this, by mistake, was delivered to this restaurant instead of whoever was supposed to get the order. When the person was offloading the truck, That's he took an extra box. So it wasn't on the invoice, so it wasn't flagged. It wasn't from flagged. There. So it ends up in the, in in the, the freezer. stock room, in the freezer. And wherever. nobody noticed it no until I came. I think, I think I came the next day or later that day, but I was saying, these things happen. Probably somebody would have noticed that at some point, but mm-hmm. anything, anything like this could happen. So that's, people always have to know that anything could happen and you really have to, you don't want to have to go kosher your place right. again. The second story was when, in a from store and somebody sent his child to go buy kosher the Pesach, maybe it was matzah meal mix or something like that, and the kid went and they bought it. And they came home and they made matzah meal and they cooked all over the kitchen and then they looked at the box and they realized it was a And they were very upset and they called the store owner and said, how could it be? How could you sell chametz in the Pesach section? I sent my child to go buy mm-hmm. kosher le Pesach. And he said, okay, let me look at the videos. He looked at the videos and he said, I'm willing to show you the videos, but it has to be in front of a rav. Let's go to rav and show you the videos. They went in front of the rav. And they saw that his son walked into the store, directly to the Hamid section, and then walked straight to the register okay, sure. and, and bought it. And the Rav told him, the fault is not your son's fault, or his daughter, whoever, where, whoever, however the older kid was. You're achroi, that anything that comes to your house, especially if you send a, 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 child. a child into the store, to verify that what they bought is the right thing. And it, I, don't, I don't know all the details from the story. They also had to kasher, you know, I think it was probably called before Pesach. But I've had other th- stories I've heard that happen on Pesach. I mean, you know, th- these are things that we don't want to, shyest that we don't want to deal with. Mm-hmm. These are Simon and Shulchan Aruch that we have to know, but ones that we ha- hope never have to open. <laughs> right. So, yes, the, the consumer, it's really about awareness. Cognizant, vigilant. When you walk into a store, you have to make sure. And there's nothing wrong with double-checking, triple-checking. Every time in my house before we start cooking for Pesach, we look again to make sure it's a kosher mm-hmm. Pesach. Sometimes it won't even say, because there are always lists out that say, from the National Shem that say, even without a P, it's kosher Pesach. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, you always have something, oh, is this approved, even though it doesn't say. It might be, but something, the, asking questions is never a bad thing. So I actually know someone who has a system in place. Maybe it's, you, you'll say that it's a little overzealous, but before Pesach, anything that's bought, they obviously check in the store when they take it off the shelf. That's step number one. Step number two is when it comes to their house, anything that comes out of a bag gets checked the second time. And then this fellow trained his wife that before she prepares anything in the kitchen, that's a third, kind of a third level. level. This way, if one of the levels, if there was a, a, a flaw at some point in the process, at least hopefully it 100%. should get caught, which is definitely a, a recommended process. Uh, any final word on this topic? Um, no, except on the last level that you said, which is which is a good point, but a lot of times packages, like you get a package on the outside box and there might be three inside. Mm. So it's always good because you never know, you know, the outside box might say one thing, the inside something right. else. You never know what happened. And mistakes happen, Baruch Hashem, everyone's human. I want to add something to this topic which just came to mind. It's actually last year, in a from supermarket, they were selling kidneys. Now, there are those who make, Spartan. Yeah, Spartan Spartan will eat it, but I know Ashkenazim, including myself, who bought these snack bags of kidneys because we assumed, again, it was in a kosher Le Pesach section, it's in a kosher, kosher supermarket. When I brought it home, and it was actually before Pesach, I cannot believe it when I picked it up and I saw it as kidneys. kidneys. So yeah. it's not necessarily that you're going to bring home something that's chametz, but even something uh, right. like kidneys. So about that, we yeah. have a, uh, uh, there is a debate among Rabbanim 
when we're dealing with supermarkets, should they be allowed to sell kidneys? All together. All together. Why? Because whatever signs we put up, and I'm sorry to say, most people don't read signs. So you can have a big sign that says, kidney is only, and people see, there no, is usual to see on the shelf is paper. Usually, the from stores, the supermarkets, they're going to put, you know, some sort of, of paper down before they put the Kosher Pesach products. So you see that, oh, there's a Kosher Pesach section. Uh -huh. I, there's a sign that says, this is kidney is only. Most people don't read that. And especially if you're going shopping with your kids and you tell your kids, pick some snack bags, right. and they're at the other end of the aisle, and then you end up with it in your Great wagon. Great example, Rabbi Tachman, thank you. My pleasure.